So as I mentioned earlier, the planning process in Ireland, we have the National Planning Framework, Ireland 2040. Uh, and then from that, each of our uh, regions, so the three regions in Ireland, have to, would, uh, sorry, had to create the regional spatial and economic strategy. So the region that uh, we're based in here in Galway uh, is the northern and western region. So northern and western region takes into account Galway City and the environs, uh, Mayo, uh, Sligo and the environs, uh, Donegal and Derry, uh, Athlone and the environs, and Cavan and Monaghan. Okay, so it's the northern and western region assembly uh, that is responsible for that area and it was responsible for creating the regional spatial and economic strategy uh, for the region. So within that strategy, there's five growth ambitions that are defined, that define each priority and how they're mutually uh, complementary, complementary. So the ambition for the regions is that it's a vibrant, connected, natural, smart and a great place to live, consolidated by a strong settlement strategy, so focused on people and places. Okay, so settlement being, uh, I suppose, a built environment that we're going to create for people uh, and for the places. The intention that is... is Third, the intention is that it becomes a living framework which is, uh, which is supported by, as required by detailed action plans, investment proposals and delivery partnerships. So this, uh, you know, the regional economic strategy for, for our region um, is a living framework. It should evolve over time. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. So the people and places part, that's the principles. So the principles, again, coming back to compact growth, uh, the compact growth will be uh, pursued to ensure sustainable growth of a more compact urban and rural settlement. So that's supported by jobs, houses, services, amenities, so the part of the built environment, uh, rather than continued sprawl and unplanned, uneconomic growth. And then the first ambition piece is, uh, is to have a vibrant um, uh, region, so that vibrant region that has strong economic growth that creates permanent sustainable jobs uh, that's achieved by uh, building a competitive and productive uh, economy. So focusing the policies on scale, investing in connectivity uh, and in our people while aggressively pursuing a low carbon approach to uh, enhance our differentiation. So in other words, invest in terms of the built environment, in terms of people, but investing that underlying it's a low carbon approach that we need to invest in. Next ambition is natural, so it's obviously been identified that more strategic actions are required to prepare the region for what is to come and highlights the need to create a combined long-term vision for the future of both energy supply and our ability to use renewable energy. So to address our energy requirements at the regional, social, uh, regional spatial and economic strategy uh, emphasises the need for coordination, new thinking, investment and skills to implement change. So all these considerations need to be con cognizant of our natural resources, the landscape and the heritage. That's the natural heritage that we have, the social heritage and the cultural heritage in there. So number uh, three in terms of the ambition is connected. So we need to be, have accessibility and mobility within the region have a direct influence on the uh, region's economic competitiveness. It has an effect on the attractiveness of the region as a favourable living and, and visiting environment. So the strategy uh, supports further investment and sustainable transport measures uh, in there. So what do we call sustainable transport measures? Well, sustainable transport measures, if we take the hierarchical of transport, the most sustainable will be walking, uh, then next will be cycling, then next will be public transport, and then lastly, in terms of mobility of people, uh, would be uh, the car or the, or the individual uh, vehicle uh, in there. But how can we have uh, even more sustainable transport? So we eliminate the need to have to travel. So going back to the compact growth part, if we can put all our infrastructure close together, where we live, where we work, uh, where our entertainment is, uh, sports, healthcare, and so on, all within a short walk or cycle distance to us, uh, then that is the most sustainable transport uh, network or design you can have. In other words, minimizing the amount of roads, the amount, uh, the, the amount uh, that people have to travel, the distance that people have to travel uh, is the most sustainable transport uh, system that we can have. So in addition, um, the region needs to strengthen the digital network uh, in there and enable new technologies uh, to work by ensuring the policies and systems are in place that can help people transition to a, uh, a world much more digitally connected in there. So, so again, that allows us to uh, reduce the amount of transport that we have by investing in the in the digital infrastructure and that's again part of the built uh, environment. Another ambition is in terms of inclusiveness. Uh, one of the strong foundations and emerging propositions that this region has to build on is its livability. So the region aspires to be one of the most livable places in Europe with a commitment to sustainable and inclusive growth. So 
basically leave nobody behind, make sure that everybody's inclusive and that we do develop a region uh, that includes for everybody. And the last ambition is in terms of the infrastructure. So pr provision and maintenance of economic infrastructure, such as uh, energy infrastructure, water infrastructure, wastewater infrastructure, because they're all key to delivering compact growth and a connected, vibrant, inclusive, resilient and smart region. So coming back to, uh, to the compact growth, these tables are taken straight from the regional economic and uh, sorry, regional spatial and economic strategy uh, for the northern and western uh, region in there, where we can see uh, on the right hand side the map with the bigger circles um, indicating the bigger population densities. So the tables here show us the uh, projections for population increase uh, in there. So table three there. If we look at the regional uh, growth centres, Galway City at Lone and Letterkenny, so the, where we have about 80,000 people currently living in Galway, the uh, projection is that there's going to be an increase of about 50% uh, increase in terms of population of the city to 2040. So that's an extra 40,000 people uh, within Galway City, uh, with about 40% increase in population of Athlone, so about Athlone and Letterkenny, about 20,000 people uh, each, an increase to 40 uh, percent, so another 8,000 or so people in each of those cities, uh, or sorry, each of those towns. Uh, and then the other uh, urban areas uh, are key towns like Ballina, Castlebar, Cavan, Ballinasloe, Monaghan, Roscommon, Carrick and Shannon, and Toome, for example. They all have currently densities or populations about between four and uh, 12,000 or so, and that they would increase their population of about 40 uh, percent. So the target is for at least 40% of all new housing to be delivered within the existing built-up areas of cities, towns and villages uh, on infill and or brown site, brownfield sites. So effectively, uh, brownfield sites, not green sites, not that are currently uh, parks or fields or so on, uh, are used for agriculture, but brownfield sites. So that means encouraging more people, jobs and activity generally within our existing urban areas rather than mainly on greenfield sites. And this requires a significant change in the approach historically taken in many places. Because many places you get sprawl, where the, you know, it's cheaper uh, for developers uh, potentially uh, to be developing uh, in a greenfield site out the edge of town, and then the next time it gets further out and further out and so on. That's not good in terms of our compact growth. That's not good for sustainable transport. That's not good for the other uh, parts of the built environment that we need for, li for a living. For example, getting energy to those uh, buildings getting wa water to the buildings, getting rid of waste and so on uh, in there. So the targets in the tables here are obviously for 2040 because the plan is for 2040. So let's look a little bit uh, closer at, say, Galway. Uh, 